Facility Planning and Design by Samantha Matthews. Before we begin, there are some terms you need to know. Physical is any materialized product that takes up volume and space, such as an oven or a refrigerator. Design is the function of facilities, such as cafeteria style or restaurant style. And layout is a drawn-up design of structural materials, which includes anything such as walls, floors, doors, windows, and all equipment. There are also some trends affecting the design of the food service facility. Americans are dining out more than ever now, so you may want to consider a higher seating capacity. There's also the taste profile of customers is changing. You want to use fresher ingredients, prepare the food in front of the customers so that they see that it's fresher, have lighter menu options, and limit desserts. And of course, employee safety. You want to reduce workplace injury and make the environment a safe place for employees to work, and it may increase employee retention and make people want to work there if you ever need to find a new employee. There's also environmental safety. Facilities have been using LEED, which is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Rating System, and it grants points based on whether or not the facility follows green building requirements. Economic factors are also major. You can reduce worker wages by um, using robots instead, which many food service facility places have been doing, and it affects the profit. You also need to know that economy affects the efficiency of the energy being used, workflow, and traffic flow. And of course, you need to look at regulations. This affects the safety and sanitation of the facility, and flooring, lighting, materials, and noise reduction all fall under this category. There are different concerns for specific food service styles. For commercial, you want to be easily accessible, have ample parking, and be quick. Oftentimes, workers have short lunch breaks, so they need to get in and out and should be located in a busy area so it's easily seen and will attract more visitors for better business. Schools and universities usually have their cafeteria on the first floor for convenience. They often use cook chill or cook freeze so that schools only need limited equipment to cook and serve the food. Some schools need multiple of the same equipment due to large volume during breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oftentimes, universities invite fast food restaurants in so that they have a very similar setup to food courts. Implant facilities have the cafeteria located in a central location so that every employee has the same opportunity to eat lunch quickly and get back to work. If the facility is large, they may have mobile units throughout so that every employee has the same opportunity to eat. Hospitals have different concerns because they have both patients and employees that they need to be concerned about. For patient needs, they typically have a different kitchen than they do for their employees where they will portion out the food for bed trays that will be delivered to patients and they put it on the tray and get it ready for delivery. They also need to have adequate passageways throughout both the kitchen and the hospital so that food can be pushed on a cart to deliver to patients. Correctional facilities have special concerns mainly about safety. Since inmates are typically food service workers, you don't want drawers and you want all the cabinets to be open. And the food service manager should have an office above the kitchen located in a central area with glass around all four sides so that they can have a full observation of what is going on in the kitchen. It is recommended that there are smaller dining rooms for correctional facilities to prevent riots between inmates. Some inmates are cell bound and so they should either have their tray portioned out in the central kitchen or there will be different um serving areas throughout the facility. Bulk food will be delivered to the serving areas and will be portioned out there and then delivered to the inmate that is bound to his cell. Now I will talk about the planning part of food service management. The prospectus is the first step in planning. It is a written detail of all aspects of the project to help the planning team know exactly what is needed. There are three parts to the prospectus. The rationale includes the plan, outcomes expected, how to achieve outcome policy and procedures, is why you want this food service establishment and what the purpose is. Physical, architectural, design, color scheme, type of food, food prep methods, anticipated business and hours of service, and it should be built based off food service style, and this helps the architect know what he needs to build. There's also regulatory information, such as safety and sanitation, and they need to be sure how these standards will be met for the project to be approved. Then there is the planning team. This includes the owner and administrator, food service manager, builder, architect, maintenance or mechanical engineer, and equipment representatives. Not all planning members are involved in every stage of planning and design except the owner and food service manage- 
manager. They are running the business, so they need to be available for any questions, and they also have the opportunity to ask questions to the other planning team members. Before designing begins, you need to conduct a feasibility study. This is data collection that determines whether the project is worth it or not. It can include customer profiles, local competition, building trends, regulatory information, inventory records, or trends in America. This can change based off of what you need for the study. Um, for example, if it's a renovation, it might focus more on operational details, but if it's a new restaurant, it may focus on everything that is listed. If the feasibility study is done correctly, funds will most likely be awarded to the operation. The next step in planning is the menu analysis. This is a very important step because it affects the equipment design. The prospectus should include a sample menu and variables such as portions, time, and storage will be reviewed by the food service manager. The food service manager also has any power to make changes to the menu he deems necessary after reviewing it. This is important because if you have a limited menu, you may not need as much equipment as someone who has a full service menu. So the menu analysis will determine what equipment is needed, which can help determine the kitchen size and dining room size later on in the design process. There are certain architectural features that every food service manager needs to pay special attention to. The first is the building. It needs to be located in an easily accessible area so that you can bring in more business and it needs to have weather withstanding material. For example, if you have a restaurant near your beach, it needs to be made of a material that can withstand heavy rains during hurricane season. Floors need to be non-slip, durable, and easy to clean. Walls also need to be durable and easy to clean, such as ceramic tile, and stainless steel is very good but rather pricey. So this is usually only used in kitchen areas. Sound absorbing materials can and should be used when possible to prevent noises from various locations such as vents and water pipes. There are some other architectural features that food service managers should consider. Lighting is very important as it can increase worker productivity between 3 and 4%. Natural lighting should be used whenever possible to reduce operational expenses. Heating, ventilation, air conditioning is also important. It increases worker productivity between 5 and 15%. You want to be able to place air ducts not directly above guests so that it does not blow cold air on them and it can be comfortable for guests. Refrigeration should be located near, near delivery sites. And oftentimes, multiple smaller refrigerators are used rather than one large refrigerator to maintain better temperatures. Plumbing includes floor drains, sinks, and steam and pressure used for cooking. And when it comes to voltage requirements and outlet placement, you may want to enlist the help of a mechanical engineer to help you with that. And remember that all wires and pipes must be covered. Now I will talk about the designing aspect of food service management. The first step in designing should be figuring out how much space you need for the dining room and the kitchen. First, you figure out the dining room by figuring out the food service style and the seating capacity. Dining room size is determined by multiplying the seating capacity per the recommended amount of square feet de determined by the food service style. For example, school cafeterias typically allow 10 to 14 square feet per seat, while fine dining recommends 22 to 24 square feet per seat in the dining room. Once you've figured out the dining room size, you can figure out the kitchen size. To determine this, there's a guideline for different kitchen areas, which is further broken down into hospitals, restaurants, and cafeterias. They list specific space allowances for different areas of the kitchen, such as receiving, dry storage, etc. per seat. For example, there is 2 square feet per seat in dry storage for cafeteria, 2.5 square feet per seat for dry storage in restaurants, and 4.3 square feet feet per bed in hospitals. Hospitals use beds because most of the clientele are patients in beds. For the most efficient kitchen, it should be a rectangular shape and the length should not be longer than twice the width for maximum convenience and so that everything is closer together and is easy to get to all the equipment. There are some general guidelines that should be followed so that every employee can move through the kitchen easily and efficiently. The main kitchen aisle should be a minimum of five feet wide. Every single worker should have at least four linear feet of work table space, although six feet is preferred. If you are carrying a cart through the aisle, the aisle should be also a minimum of five feet wide. Aisles between equipment and work tables should be at least three feet to allow for movement of employees and for storage. Aisles between equipment and work tables with tilting kettles to be emptied in the aisle should be three and a half to four feet wide. And if an employee is standing, the work table should be 36 to 41 inches tall. But if they are sitting, it should be 28 to 30 inches tall. 
This allows for a more efficient kitchen. Once you've decided the space of the kitchen, you need to determine how much space you need for equipment. When designing how much space is needed for the equipment, there are a few things the manager needs to know. The style of food service, the activities that need to be done in the kitchen, the catalogs of equipment that list sizes and aisles around equipment for movement and storage. The key to equipment needs is the style of food service. This determines what activities in the kitchen will need to be done. The manager can then decide what equipment is needed and all the catalogs from equipment manufacturers list what size the equipment is. And per the ADA, there needs to be enough room in the kitchen for employees to move around for those that have disabilities. And then also there needs to be storage in the kitchen so everything has easy access. The ADA, or Americans with Disabilities Act, put guidelines into place so that people with disabilities can have the same enjoyable experience as every other consumer. And these regulations need to be considered when designing a food service establishment. It also does not allow employers to discriminate against employees that have disabilities if they are fully qualified for the job. Because of this ADA Act, people need to make wider spaces, have ramps, have bathrooms that are easily accessible with wheelchairs, wider doors, and grab bars with shorter tables and countertops. Overall, there must be no obstructions and pathway areas wide enough, preferably 42 inches, for a person with wheelchair access to be able to get through easily, and everything with easy access, so that would include lowering countertops, sinks, and soap dispensers. The ADA has an entire checklist for specifics to accommodate disabled persons. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much.